So, if you have seen any of my previous videos talking about B550, then, well, you know that I'm quite excited for it, and, well, it's released. So, if you're planning on going B550, which motherboard should you go with? Well, that's what I'll be going over in this guide to choosing your perfect B550 motherboard, so strap in, because this is going to get really exciting. At the lowest end, if you just need something B550 to drive your Ryzen CPU, then you can go with the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming 4. It'll cost you around $115 and will come with pretty much everything you need for a lower end build. So that's right, if you want to go with Ryzen, you can get started at just $115 if you want to go with B550, which is just insanely good. Now, it's not a great motherboard at that price, as you can expect, especially the VRMs, as its power delivery is only based on eight phases. So forget any hopes you have of running any high-end CPUs on it. But if you need something more and have the money to spare, then I recommend going for the new Budget Gigabyte offering the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Elite. This motherboard will only set you back $160, but you get way better features. Firstly, the VRMs are way better, providing 12 phases of power delivery, which means that not only is overclocking plausible, even if not optimal on this motherboard, but it will also be able to run higher end CPUs like Ryzen 7s and Ryzen 9s. And that's not to mention that it compared to many lower end B550 motherboards and even, even quite a few higher end it can lead demolishes them all when it comes to connectivity. We're whopping 8 USBs at the back plus 2.5 gigabit LAN. Like I don't even have that on my X570 motherboard over there that only uses gigabit ethernet but no here you get 2.5 gigs in the back which is absolutely amazing. Getting such good internet on a $160 motherboard is just almost unheard of. That's not to mention the fact that it also has free full length PCIe 16x slots inside, unlike many of its cheaper and even some more expensive counterparts, and also two M.2 slots, so you have plenty of room for expansion. So you can see why it has been pretty much my go to motherboard for recommending for people. It's only $160 and you get some absolutely insane features with it. Pretty much everything you could ever ask for at that budget. Now, here, a case can also be made for another rather popular brand of motherboards the MSI B550 Tomahawk. It will cost you $20 more than the B550 Eros Elite. However, it provides some extra cool features. Connectivity-wise, it does have slightly less USB ports, but it does have an oh-so-important USB Type-C, allowing you to use a way faster interface for a lot of stuff. And as the years go on, USB Type-C devices will become even more prevalent, so it's definitely a really good thing to have now and in the future. Plus, and the back has two Ethernet RJ45 ports if you want. One 2.5 gig and one standard gigabit Ethernet. Now, not too many people would probably want two, but if you want those people that could use it, then there it is. And hey, if you want PS2, then there's even a PS2 port on this. And just like B550 Eros Elite, it does have two M2 slots. However, it's missing that third 16x PCIe slot. And instead, it has been replaced by a tiny 1x slot. So if you need two Ethernet ports and just really like MSI, then you can go for that. But also, at the same price, you can go for another gigabyte motherboard that completely blows its competition out of the water with the B550 Aorus Pro. Like the Aorus Elite and also the MSI Tomahawk, it does have 12 fates of power delivery, so it comes to overall CPU support, it's got me about on par. However, its other features, I would really give this one an edge. So remember, this is for the same price. Let's start with the rear I.O. because, man, it's a treat. As you get 12, 12 USB ports at the back including a Type-C, which is absolutely insane. So if you're someone who uses a lot of USB ports, then for $180, you definitely can't go wrong with this one. And rear I.O. is not the only way it can really destroys its competition, as if you're the kind of person that needs it, well, it also provides you with a third PCIe 16X slot. Plus, at least in my opinion, it definitely looks way better than a Tomahawk. But this is where also B550 recommendations kind of run out. Because yes, even though there are more expensive motherboards, at that point, you'll be kind of competing with X570 motherboards. And so then it starts depending on whether you need the X570 functions, like you should way better VMs than PCIe Gen 4, but if you don't want them, and you just want better connectivity, and you have the money to spare, and if you want to stick to B550, well, there still are a few options you can go for. But, and if you really want to spend almost $300 on a B550 motherboard, then it mainly comes down to two choices. Either the ROG Strix B550 e Gaming or the B550 Aorus Master. They both cost around $280, both come with 16 phases of power delivery, which is really nice. It's something that even in X570 motherboards isn't incredibly common. Well, it is common on more higher end ones, but definitely not on more budget ones. And also they both include Wi-Fi support. But when you look closely at them, 
then it can becomes rather clear which one is better. IOG finally decided to ROG was finally able to catch up and include a third 16xp SATE slot inside, however its USB connectivity at the back did not age well, as it still only has 8 USB ports. Granted, two of them are Type-C, but one of them is the special ROG Audio Type-C, so compatibility with a lot of devices can vary on that one. So overall, for around $280, it does sound like a decent motherboard, right? Well, that would be the case if not for the existence of the B550 Aeros Master. Truly, Aeros have really ran off with it in this generation of motherboards, like, because the value they provide is amazing. Just, just listen to this and compare it to the ROG motherboard we've just been through. It too has 16 phases of power delivery, but it has 12 USB ports, including a USB Type-C, and it has 3 M.2 slots. Which means that when it comes to storage expansion, your choices are huge. And at least in my opinion, it also looks a lot better, but that's kind of subjective, really. And there are some other boards more expensive than that, but at that point, I'd highly recommend just go XI70. When you spend almost $300 on the B550 motherboard, first, you should re-examine your life choices, and then secondly, you should just go X570. Now if you're building something a bit more compact, don't worry, there are some choices for MATX as well. With the cheapest also being just $115 from AceRock with the AceRock B550M Pro 4. It is pretty much identical to the B550 Phantom Gaming 4, but it is MATX. And if you need something better for MATX, then maybe go with an MSI B550 Mortar, which is probably equivalent to its Tomahawk, but again, just slightly smaller. And that is really it, so I hope this guide really helped you out. I'll be putting our Amazon links to most of these suggestions down in the future below and probably also in the comments. And if you buy any of them using our links, then well, we get part of the money and you don't pay anything extra, so it's a win win. Plus, I'd highly recommend you check out my other three videos on B550 so you get a really full idea on what exactly this whole launch is about. And I just really hope this guide helped you. If it did help you, remember to like this video. Also, coming back to the video description very quick, down there you also find a link to my Discord if you want to talk to me or about this video or, or whatever else really. Down there's my Patreon if you want to have to talk to channel monetarily. And that's really it, so I hope you enjoyed this particular video. If you didn't, subscribe like whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I look next. Goodbye everyone. Goodbye. Bye.